It's time for a quick look at some tardigrades, like these two having a staring contest. At least some tardigrades are capable of anhydrobiosis, like deloid rotifers, and they sometimes can be found in the same habitats. My father collected a bunch of mosses and lichens for me from Central California, and I soaked those in water for a few minutes, then looked for tardigrades. I didn't find any tardigrades in the mosses. Those seem to be the domain of the deloids, like these, which are still in their dehydrated form. But when I soaked these lichens in water, I found lots of tardigrades. There is a catch, though. They were very slow to get out of their anhydrobiotic state and start walking around, so they were mostly just lying on the bottom of the dish. Still, I will count this as a success. These have four pairs of lobopods. The anterior three are obvious, but the posterior pair on the right end of this individual is pulled in. The blunt end to the left is where the mouth is. Between the first two pairs of lobopods in the body, you can see the muscular pharynx. Here's one in dorsal view. You can see the lobopods with their claws. The pharynx is clear, and posterior to that, you can kind of see the stomach. You can faintly see a pair of black eyes on the anterior end on the left. But all of this would be much easier to see on livelier tardigrades, so I bought some from a tardigrade supplier. This file contains something like 50 tardigrades, members of the genus Hypsibius. They are small. Here's a nice one in dorsal view. There's algal food in this animal's stomach. Here's another in dorsal view. Between the stomach, which has yellowish food in it, and the body wall, you can see lots of large blood cells sloshing around. Close to the anterior, you can see the pharynx, and just behind it on either side, a pair of salivary glands. Here's one in ventral view. The pharynx is pretty clear here when it stretches out, and the salivary glands on the left and right sides of the pharynx to its posterior. Here's a nice side view showing the connection of the pharynx to the stomach.
It's been hard to see the structures anterior to the pharynx clearly, but you can see them well in a squished tardigrade. This one is in ventral view, I think. The pharynx is circular, and a tube leads directly from it to the mouth. On either side of that tube is a curved stylet. Those two stylets can be protruded from the mouth to poke holes in plant cells, for example, from which the tardigrade will then suck up the cytoplasm. As good ectisozoans, tardigrades need to shed their cuticle periodically. I found some molted cuticles in the jar, like this one in side view. Tardigrades deposit eggs at molting, and they leave the embryos to develop protected in the old cuticle. Here's an early embryo developing inside of a molt. Eventually those hatch out as juvenile tardigrades, leaving an empty egg capsule in the molt. This molt has two of those egg capsules. And this molt has four empty egg capsules.